What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Making Podcasts Great Again. I am your tech stuff guy, Jay Nog, and we are here, of course, with the president of the United States of Mar-a-Lago of America, Mr. Donald J. Trump. Mr. President, how are you today? Uh, well, we live in a we live in a, a tyranny, a tyranny banks, and it's it's sad. It's sad, and it's I don't know. I didn't know our country could get so low tech stuff. I didn't know our country could date so low, so fast. But it is. It's in. It's in the gutter. It's in. You know when like a garbage truck leaves a corner and it leaves that like milky garbage cum water. Ah, uh, this is the gross water that's on the ground. Yeah. Well, what I, mil- I was, you know, I have better words than you. I said gross milky cum water. I get that's it. what our country. That's what our country is now. That's what our country is. And some people care. Some people care very strongly. And some people just get on their knees and, you know, swallow the gross milky cum water. They say, give it to me, sanitation truck, you big truck. I'm a radical left nasty person who doesn't love our country. So some people try to get away from it. And some people just drink it up. Just slurp it up and say, give me more. Well, Mr. President, I know uh, today may not be such a great day for the Trump organization for that tax fraud trial. The jury is deliberating now on it. Uh, What are your thoughts on this? Uh, To be honest, I don't know this Trump organization that well. You know, I worked for, you know, I did some work for it for for a little bit. (laughs) But if they they broke laws, uh, then that's too bad for the Trump organization. But as you know, the Trump organization is not Donald J. Trump. So if people were doing nasty things uh, there, you know, that's not good. We don't support legal, but I think it was, I think this is a witch hunt. And if it's found, if if they, you know, come back against the Trump organization, then I don't know it very well. But if if it's found, you know, not liable, then I would say, it's a good organization and it was a total witch hunt. So we'll see. We have to see what the jury says before I make a final decision. Do you have any affiliation with the Trump organization? Oh, well, Fred Trump, the great Fred Trump started it. And I know that uh, Dan Jr. and Ivanka and uh, Eric all work for it. You know, so... Yes, it's got it's got connections for sure, and I'm not denying that. I'm not denying that there's not a strong Trump family connection. Do you have anything to do with the Trump organization? Well, I'm a Trump. Some might even call me the Trump, and you know. So of course, you know, we have a relationship. I put my name on a lot of things. People like the brand. They like the brand. Mm-hmm. They say, can I put this on my building, sir? And I say, okay, you pay the fee, you, did, you put it on your building. Do you think if if uh, the Trump organization is convicted of this tax fraud, do you think that will taint your reputation or the Trump organization reputation or the, the Trump name at all? I know the jury can lick my taint, but it won't taint me. And no, it's... When you live in a country that's abandoned law and order and has become a total joke, why would I feel bad? Why would I feel bad? Oh, no. A radical left jury in a witch hunt in a failing country that is a joke found an organization that coincidentally happens to have my name attached to it. Oh, no. What a sad day for me. No, no, not a sad day at all. Very sad for the country. That's who it's sad for. If I were weak and a beta cock who cried, I might even weep for the country, but we don't weep. We don't weep. We read them and weep, but not literally weep. If for some reason right now, uh, one of the jury members were listening to this podcast and they happen to be a uh, member of Patreon, what what message would you like to uh, say to any potential jury members? Oh, we would give you a very not guilty verdict there might be a we might be running a five percent off one month of patreon (laughs) not guilty special that's a that's a good deal you know on the on the mike pence level which we should really rename 
uh, by the way, it's a treasonous level. But for five dollars, you know, for five dollars a month, you would get fifty cents off if you say not guilty. You'd get fifty cents. Who's a rapper, by the way? You yes. would get fifty cents off one month. I don't know who in this world can pass up that kind of deal, but that's you know that that should get its own new book, The Art of the Deal, Patreon edition. So a five percent off uh, of the five. Did I say five percent? Yeah, she did five percent. Oh no, then it would be. You know what? I just raised. Excuse me. It would be ten percent, fifty cents. Gotcha. I mean, now okay. now you got me making even better deals, and they they're practically robbing me. All they have to do is say not guilty. I'm watching you rewrite the art of the deal as we record. Historic moment, podcast history. Very historic. Very good writing. Cursive, cursive, which is, of course, when you say fuck, that's called cursive. Okay. Now, Mr. President, you've, you've said some wild things throughout your political career. Some you make frowned. my heart sing. <laughs> I know that one. I know that one. Oh, you make everything. What do I make everything what? God damn it. Can you fly with me one time on a song? Is that a song? <laughs> I I was just doing bars. You know, I have freestyle, great raping. I do freestyles. <laughs> they call me a hip hop raper. So this week you said that we should terminate the Constitution and terminate laws and because you are really should be acting president in the white house so everything that this country stands on should be flips flipped upside down or just destroyed is that correct well it should be f flip it up smack it rub it down oh no because <laughs> this country's poison okay <laughs> and it's, I love the Constitution. I don't think this is the Constitution's fault. I think the Constitution meant well. The Constitution was not written to have a sleepy, treasonous destruction of our country. It was not prepared for what the sleepy Joe radical left would do. So when I say destroy the Constitution, imagine somebody worked for you, okay? Mm -hmm. And they were a very nice person. And they... They did the best they could, and most of the time the work was good. But one day, they burned your house down by accident. You'd have to fire them. Even if it was an accident, you'd say, I can't have you here. That's what our country, that's what the Constitution is doing. It allowed Sleepy Joe to destroy our country, and therefore we have to rip it up and start over again. Because if you have a stolen election, then you have nothing else to then there's nothing else to talk about. It's bigger than even the Constitution. Okay. But you think just destroying everything that this country has been created on because of um your opinion? Well, it, well we it's, it's not opinion, it's called fact. And we Got rid of slavery, which some people think was a good thing. Other people, not so much. But we got rid of that, and that was in the Constitution. How about that? You didn't think of that tech stuff. So if we get rid of slavery, then let's start over again. Maybe we bring back, maybe not having slavery is the problem. Maybe if we'd had slavery, Sleepy Joe would have never won. Nobody ever brings that up. Under the original Constitution, nobody wants to bring, you know, the three-fifths, because I can tell you, if all those votes in Georgia that were stolen were only three-fifths votes, I win in a landslide. You ever think about that? No, I bet not. I bet not. No. Um, have you spoken to any other Republicans and what they think of um, your idea here? Sloppy Steve Bannon thinks it's a great idea. Uh, Stephen Miller, my great immigration expert, thinks it's the greatest idea he's ever heard. Steve Bannon, isn't he in prison? 
I don't know if phone's in person. I don't know if he's in person. He called me. I mean, I said, sir, will you accept this collect call? And I said, maybe. You ever do that? It's a, it's great. They never know what to do. They say, will you accept this call? And you say, let me think about it. And then they let the, the phone call through. And then you hang up before you give them an answer. It's a total beautiful <laughs> out of the deal with collect calls. You scam collect calls? It's called deal. It's called smart. It's called being smart, tech stuff. But uh, I talked to many strong advisors. Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, she said that she totally agrees. Even Bubbert, who was trying to pull away from me, she's come around and she said to me, sir, I would love to be the first lady. So whatever happens, whatever has to happen, make me the fourth first lady. I will support that. Publicly? People, people said this. No one said this publicly. But they say it to me. I know, but wouldn't it hold credibility if they actually said it to the masses and not just to you? Okay, tech stuff. I know you've never been a president, so I'll try to give you President 101. Please. You build up your strength. You don't make big announcements first. You build mm -hmm. up your strength in private. Okay? Okay. Like Martin Taylor Green. She does a CrossFit in private. And then she gets gang banged in public in her gym while her husband watches and then divorces her. That's what you have to do. You have to get strong in private and then you come out with your team. I'm just telling you, I thought I thought I could share it with the podcast people and the tech stuff, but obviously you're probably going to run to cry and Chuck Schumer, whoever the hell your senator is, and say, oh, sir, he's, he's, planning, he's planning to take over, sir. Well, I thought I could share this with the podcast, our strong podcast people. But maybe the other one we can't trust. How about that? Who, who, who thought tech stuff is more like tree? You know what? Treason stuff. That's your <laughs> new name. Treason stuff guy. Treason stuff guy. I, I'm, all I'm doing is just questioning. I'm, I'm just trying to get information for the listeners. That That's all I'm trying to do here. Well, you can say that now that everybody who heard that knows that that's not what you were doing. It is what I was doing. Oh, it sounded yeah, just, like you're a radical left agent who's trying to destroy. Now, now you're not only trying to destroy the country, you're trying to destroy the podcast. But you're trying to destroy the Constitution. Maybe the Constitution. What do you think is more important? The country or the Constitution? The Constitution's a piece of paper written by old people. And maybe because we have a sleepy Joe president who is probably at the founding with the founding fathers, we're all saying, oh, we have to run it. No. We have to save the country, even if the Constitution, if the if they put an amendment in the Constitution tech stuff and voted on it and said everybody must shoot themselves in the head, what would you that do? Has, would you say, well, the Constitution, sir? I mean that that would have to be voted in, and and if it was, and, would you shoot yourself in the head, or would you say, I think no we country. need a new Constitution? Then everyone would have to shoot them. We'd have no country. Oh, then. oh, we'd have no country. But I thought the constant. But we'd still have a constitution. Everybody'd be dead, and there'd be a piece of paper, and we could all say, "Oh, wonderful! Everyone's dead, but there's a piece of paper, and we honored it very strongly." Thank you, sir. I say, country before constitution. <laughs> Valid point, Mr. President. We stand corrected. Oh, it's called Big Brain. Very, very big brain. So hypothetical situation, you are elected president again. Are you going to get rid of the Constitution? Or which are you term going to... would... I have a little test for you. What term would I be serving? Your third. Okay, very good. Would I get rid of the Constitution? Yes. We'd look into it. Because <laughs> we'd have to strengthen the country. Once we have a chance, we'd have to strengthen it. And that means getting rid of Turtle Mitch McConnell and putting in a Senate leader that could actually get things done and be strong. Like Herschel Walker, Texas Ranger. <laughs> Herschel Walker. We're going to talk about Herschel Walker in, in just a, in just a couple of minutes, but I'm sure the American people um, are very confident, and we will see him from destroying the Constitution. Um, 
you don't want to give us a def i guess a definite answer wouldn't be fun right Whatever. well the first thing i do is destroy the declaration of independence because it said oh pursuit of liberty and happiness well i'm not happy so bye bye declaration of independence and that would be sort of a test how would you destroy it i take it out of its glass case and wipe my ass with it after a strong number three <laughs> And then I'd feed it to melatonin, who did do that in a couple of videos. And when she was younger, very strong German, she was she was leased out to a German video company for two years where she did some of her most graphic work. And she would eat the skid mark filled Declaration of Independence and she would wash it down with a nice glass of wine, like an elegant woman that she is. <laughs> And then we'd see how we'd look at the polls. We'd say, uh, what does America think? And you know what they'd say? They'd say it was the greatest show. I've never seen anything. I've never seen a presidential third first lady eat a poop stained declaration of independence. I love this president. And then we would have clearance to go after the constitution. Well, well said, Mr. President. Mr. President, your, your buddy, Michael Avenatti, um, is in the news again for not such great reasons. He was sentenced uh, 14 years in prison for stealing money from his clients. Pretty harsh sentence. What are your thoughts on Michael Avenatti, the sentencing, what he did? Please let us know. What he did was he represented a horse-faced adult film star who I never had sexual relations with. And he lied and he tried to build his name up by attacking a great president with false information. And it turns out he was a sleazeball who was stealing from everybody. And now he's going to go, Avenatti is going to go get some stuffed eggplant and some cannolis in the nearby prison and he probably thinks it's going to be some sort of good fellas where he's slicing garlic very thin but i think he's going to have a very rough time in prison and that's what he deserves and there's a few things i believe in and one is being very honest with money and with people who work for you and work with you and he was not that and this is who the left the left thought he was the greatest attorney since Sidney Powell, they acted like he was the greatest legal mind, as, and, and he's not. If he was such a great legal mind, he would have had poop dripping from his forehead, <laughs> like Alloy or Rudy Giuliani, but he didn't. So good riddance. I hope he rots in jail and total disgrace. Now, I mean, the man successful made a lot of money do you think that i mean you're a lawyer you should know the law if you're a lawyer he did I mean, I this. Know the law very well but i'm not a lawyer i know that well you you are you know the one percenter you know just knowing almost everything now michael Avenatti, being a lawyer how did he think he was not going to get caught stealing from his clients when i mean he knows the law and also, I mean, he's very successful, too. It just doesn't make sense. What do you think his motivation was? I mean, it can't just be just money. I mean, was he, not, excuse was me, he in not debt every, to someone? Not, but not everybody's a humble Christian like me. Mm -hmm. it, some people can't handle wealth and power, so you get a little taste of it. Maybe Stormy Daniels lets you suck on her nipple mm -hmm. and gives you a, rub, a tug when you win some motion in court. Maybe she brings over some porn star friends and you bang them from behind and, you know, you think, well, I'm king of the world. I Nobody can stop me. And then all of a sudden you start dipping into client funds. You're dipping into clients' underwear. And then you think, well, what if I dip into their bank account? Same difference. And that's, I think, what happened. Avenatti, it takes a strong Christian and a talent to be able to handle beautiful women, wealth and power like me. I handle it better than pretty much everybody. Avenatti, who's kind of short, bald, doesn't have beautiful hair like me, probably just saw an opportunity and and couldn't see, couldn't stop himself like a, you know, like a kid. 
Oh, she's a, cho- a box of chocolate chip cookies. I says, oh, I like chocolate chip cookies. And they eat one. The next thing you know, they've eaten the whole box and they're vomiting and shitting themselves. <laughs> and that's what Avenatti did. He shit himself full of chocolate chip cookies. Very sad, but also very well deserved. And also, if he's interested in additional legal work, uh, I would be open to a discussion. Okay. Now, Mr. President, we do have a another sponsor this week, and this this new company who is sponsoring us is awesome. Um, and talk about, by the way, I already yes. know who it is. Yes. What was I just talking about? Being responsible with your money. And exactly. how about this? How about this? This is what a sponsor does. You can talk now. Okay. It's rocket money. Okay. And if you don't know what rocket money is, uh, I, I signed up for rocket money and you sign up with Sony subscription these days, right? It's going to be Netflix, Hulu. Um, I don't know, whatever, you know, no one gets newspapers anymore. So you get subscriptions, different papers, magazines, everything's online now. And you just can't keep track of all the subscriptions that you have. I, didn't even realize I was subscribing to something that was $120 a year. I had no clue. And then it came up on rocket money and I canceled it right away. Save myself $120. I only been using this for about a month, month and a half already. You have to check out rocket money. Okay. It saves, it will save you money on any subscription that you have that you forgot about. The app shows all your subscriptions in one place and then cancels for you whatever you don't still want okay rocket money can even find subscriptions you didn't even know you were paying for you may even find out you've been double charged for a subscription to cancel subscription all you have to do is just press cancel and rocket money takes care of the rest it is so easy you just download the app you sign up for it and then rocket mail does all the hard work for you rocket money does all the hard work for you and all you have to do is just click cancel when you want to cancel okay so get rid of those useless subscriptions with rocket money now go to rocketmoney.com slash mpga seriously if if you're gonna buy one thing buy this for yourself for the holidays splurge on this because you will save some more money and buy other people gifts with all the money that you spent or even treat yourself to something seriously it can save you hundreds per year that's rocketmoney.com slash mpga cancel your unnecessary subscriptions right now at rocketmoney.com slash mpga yes indeed Um, i used it to uh, cancel uh, spousal payments to Marla Maples. And I also, uh, Don Jr. had asked me to subscribe to some sort of stupid newsletter he's doing. And I said, no, thank you. Rocket money, <laughs> cancel. So and it avo- you avoid all the awkwardness. Don Jr. doesn't even know that I canceled. I was just like, cancel, thank you. Rocket money. Yeah, it's the best. So check it out again. Rocketmoney.com slash MP. GA. Mr. President, tomorrow's the big day in Georgia between your buddy Herschel Walker and Raphael Warnock. Is that how you pronounce his name? Warnock. Um, There was a poll taken, Mr. President. I don't know if you plan on going to Georgia tomorrow, but um, there's a favorable rating and unfavorable rating. And favorable rating for you is at 39% in Georgia. And unfavorable rating is at 54%. So people think that if you show up to Georgia to help tomorrow with Herschel Walker, that it will not help uh, in his favor. What are your thoughts on this runoff tomorrow? I think Herschel is going to win. He's been doing such great work. He's really, he's such a talented guy. Great football player, great Christian uh great father great man and Raphael, who is my least favorite of the ninja turtles is really a total failure he was a disgrace he failed georgia the part of the reason we have this horrible biden economy is because warnock forced through too much money you know he wanted to hand out money and you know what that hurt us you know what her show was great at handoffs. He would catch the handoff and he would take it himself. So you have, it's the handoff versus the handout. 
And I say, who do you want running that ball in the Senate chamber? Do you want Herschel Walker running and tackling Democrats before they can vote? Or do you want fake pastor Raphael Warnock raging war on our country? Knock, knock. Who's there? It's Raphael Warnock. And you're dead because he killed the country. <laughs> and Herschel Walker is strong. He, he could beat the crap out of every other senator, I think, combined. It wouldn't even be close. He has MMA skills. He's tough. But he won't do it because he's he listens and he does what he's told, which is how Raphael Warnock gets up and speaks on the, you know, like on his pulpit at his Martin Luther King church. And he's, oh, listen to me, listen to me talk. Herschel Walker asked me for permission to speak. Doesn't that sound nice to all my patriots and Republican voters? A nice, big, strong African-American. Boss, can I, can I talk now? Well, yes, you can, Herschel. Thank you for being so respectful of your president. And he's so nice and so respectful and cares. Raphael Warnock doesn't care about anything except ruining the economy and being radical left. And that's not what we need. So I think Herschel is going to win. I think he's going to win very big, frankly. And Georgia will see that they have fake polls that are trying to tear me down. But they're not going to tear me down. And Herschel is going to build me up because I'm going to have him working seven days a week in the fields to build <laughs> me back up. <laughs> that's a metaphor, but also I mean it. Oh, goodness. Mr. President, I don't know if you watch any of the World Cup action. The U.S. made the round of 16 and lost to Netherlands this past weekend, 3-1. to one. Did you catch any of the action? What were your thoughts on how the U.S. performed? Well, obviously, nobody pointed out that we never lost a match when I was president. Nobody ever points that out. We had, exact, we had zero losses in 2018 when I was president, but nobody likes to bring that up. All we do is lose with Sleepy Joe. So, first of all, I think it's sad for our team that they have a weak president, and now they lose. So how about that? But I think, I want to know what the hell is going on with Netherlands, frankly, because even though I think soccer is for very weak people and it's a stupid sport, very fa favored by the international people, and the people, International House of Pancakes, they love, it's, they love soccer. But how the hell do you lose? I don't even know, Netherlands. And then you, they call them the Dutch. What the hell is that? Well, then you're from Dutch, Dutchville. <laughs> now we're from the Netherlands. Okay. Well, where's Holland? That's us too. Okay. So now this is what a real president would do. He would fight. He would fight and say, this can't be. We're losing to three countries. The <laughs> Netherlands, the Dutch, and the Hollandaise saw us. And we have one country. We're the United States. We have many states. Some people say possibly 40, maybe even more. We're finding new ones. Pretty much every day they're discovering new states. and ter Don't forget the territories. We have those too. But remember Guam? We have somebody from Guam who's a Patreon patriot. Yes. You, got, you can't forget Guam. So that's Never 41. Forget. 40 states and the territory of Guam. 41. And a real president would fight and say, it's three countries against one. That's not fair. That's called fake World Cup. But did Sleepy Joe fight? No, he's too busy doing fake videos. I didn't even know where he was going. He's like, come on, Jack, win the World Series. <laughs> Now, before we get to our questions from our listeners, it is the first episode of the month, and this month is the last month of the year of 2022, and a very special month because it is the Eppies, and the Eppies will be taking place on December 29th at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. That is right, and we're doing something special this year for our Patreon patriots. If you can only vote if you are a Patreon patriot. 
You can any only level, all vote. levels, any level. Yes, all levels can vote, but only if you are a Patreon Patriot, you can vote, and only the perfect tens will be um, allowed access to the Epis this year. Again, it is um, African American tie attire, and it is patreon.com slash MPGA. We have new patrons coming in every single week, and we really appreciate you guys. And if you're going to sign up, sign up this month for the Epis. Treat yourself during the holidays. Again, it is the 29th. We will be coming out in the next week or so for nominees and any Patreon patriot. When this episode is posted, please, in the comments section, if you have any categories or any episodes or any guests or any moments on the show that you would like to nominate, Please nominate them in the comments. Again, it's patreon.com slash MPGA. And the big night will be December 29th at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time for the Epis. Mr. President, it's time for some questions this week. We got to get and through the questions quickly because there is a... We're going to. Very strong presidential food order on its way. <laughs> and it rhymes with fish filet. <laughs> Well, there is, I think, about seven questions. So let's get through them here. Um, This comes from our uh, our pet president. Um, This is all from Facebook. We have Michael Craig. Good day from down under, Dr. President. Yeah. (laughs) Oscar the cat thanks you for bestowing the title of pet president on him and hopes it lasts longer than last time, which I don't think it lasted a full episode. <laughs> Apologies for any typos. I had to wake up at 1 a.m. He always gives you a story. <laughs> 1 a.m. to ensure I did not miss it so I would not be berated in the podcast for missing it. Hopefully your new tech stuff guy can correct any. Oscar was wondering if you wanted to weigh in on Herschel Walker's claim from his speech that it's better to be a werewolf than a vampire because while a vampire is cool, a werewolf can kill a vampire. Do you think he said this because he just watched the 24% Rotten Tomatoes scoring flop Van Helsing by Australia's Hugh Jackman and Richard Roxborough, Roxburgh? Where... Look at the self-serving. Look at the self-serving mentioning Australians who are coming to America, by the way, and stealing our acting jobs. Not a, not a great move by Oscar the Cat. And Michael C., Uh, but I'll allow it. Where this was Hugh Jackman's was finally able to defeat the cool. All right, we get it. We get it. Vampires or werewolves. Excuse me. Or is this a deeper meaning that we're all just not getting? No, it's this is I love Herschel Walker. He's a good boy. But what I will tell you right now is it's vampires all day because werewolves are almost like even when they're white people. They sort of turn into big, strong African Americans with hair. They're almost like the Greek, you know. It's almost like they're Greek but black, covered in hair, but very strong and African American. And I think all you'd have to do if you were in a town with werewolves, you tell all the cops, or just put some silver bullets in your gun and do strong criminal justice. All of a sudden, you see a guy turning into a werewolf. He gets ten silver bullets right in the gut. Turns out he was, you know just a hairy black guy trying to drive his kid to the park. But you know what? Too bad. Bye-bye. Whereas vampires can turn into bats and give us COVID, or they can fly away, or they can sink their teeth, and they're also very strong at sex. In all the vampire movies, they're very powerful lovers, and they're also often very white. So I don't know what the hell he's to... I, I think Herschel Walker, I agree with him on a lot of things. Totally off. Werewolves would lose to both the police and vampires. Vampires would go home and have sex with the werewolf's widow while the werewolf gets shot by strong silver bullet police. Thank you, Michael C., for your uh, yeah. four paragraphs. Appreciate you. <laughs> Nick Wilson, question is next from Facebook. Your Highness, Dr. 
Um, I think it's over six feet, sir. Excuse me, to the sixth to the sixth power. Show our show our Patreon perfect ten member proper respect. I saw it. I saw it when I was doing investigating. <laughs> okay, to the sixth power, sir, Mr. President, sir. I saw that Granny Titties Pelosi said on her way out as House Leader that she enjoyed working with three presidents. Since she clearly must have loved serving under you, I was wondering if you think it was Bush, Obama, or Biden whom she chose to omit. Thank you, sir. Great question. And uh, by the way, she had one correction to our great friend, Nick. Uh, I wouldn't let her serve under me. I want to see those things. We're talking strong presidential cowgirl. <laughs> because I want to see those. I want to see those knockers. And so I would say she probably, you know, she's Italian. So for being totally honest, she probably hated working for Obama. You know how the Italians are. You ever see The Godfather or any Spike Lee movies? They're not big fans of the African-Americans will be nice. So I would say she enjoyed Bush, which, you know, at her age, she probably has a substantial one. <laughs> and Bill Clinton obviously was very smooth with the ladies. And she was a little younger back then. She was like a very young 92 when Clinton was president. Now she's a heavy hanging 130 but uh and she of course loved working for we had a very like remember moonlighting we had like that moonlighting energy where will they won't they and so unfortunately for obama italians don't like let's just say kenyan americans <laughs> with a hard eye thank you nick wilson our last one comes from Looks like Shannon Shirley, but it starts with an X. Zanon Shirley. Um, dear, I think that's Mr. like Mexican Shannon because yeah. they sometimes have those necks with names with the X. Yeah, or it could know. be adult an adult film star, which we're very interested in that as a Christian. Could be that as well. Dear Mister Doctor President Esquire, Sir, do you think America will break out into civil war in two thousand twenty three? And if so, where will the major battles be fought? Will it be the Mountain Dew Army attacking New York or Biden's woke soldiers invading Wyoming? Thank you from Australia, sir. A huge fan of the podcast and a loyal Patreon supporter. Oh, look at that. Looks like Michael C. might have competition. And we sort of like it when our Australian people write less than the Gettysburg Address. So how about that, Michael C.? No, I'm, we kid Michael C. He's very, he's one of our great advisors and we respect him. Yeah. But what I will say is... The left isn't going anywhere near places like Wyoming. All it is is tough whites with guns. They're going to avoid that. Now, I think Florida will be a battleground because they're going to think they can take Florida, but we're going to take them very strong because that's the center of the Mountain Dew Army because that's the bath salts division in Florida. <laughs> we're the tip, of the, we're the tip of, the, of the spear in Florida, the bath salts and Mountain Dew spear. I would say... That'll be tough. I would say Virginia, much like the civil, the original Civil War, I think Virginia will be a, a, a place of strong conflict. And I think that Idaho, where we have a great Idaho Militia Christian Bible Tech State College, I think that's going to be that's going to be our point of attack for California. It's going to descend. On, uh, that's like sort of our SEAL Team 6, but they're not SEAL Team 6, they're uh, Moron Team 69 is mm -hmm. who we send out from Idaho Militia Christian. So, look at So, Idaho will be, and in Florida will be our sort of aggressive campaigns and Virginia I think is where you're going to see some of the worst battling because it's, it's one of the few purple places and it will be a battle between the woke East and the powerful patriotic South. We have three more questions left, Mr. President, and all three of these come from Twitter. Uh, first is DJ McConnell, who was at the last uh, live um, Perfect 10 episode. <laughs> Mr. President, sir, when Mr. Mike Lindell defeats total loser Rona McDaniel to become head of the RNC, will he finally do the right thing and use the funds to build the Mount Rushmore of rights. 
how we've talked about that. He's actually, uh, that's a great question because he's actually introducing uh, a Roy Den Hollander bathrobe, a My Pillow Roy Den Hollander bathrobe, uh, which has an image of the great men's rights activist Roy Den Hollander in one hand murdering a teenager and the other hand shooting himself in the head to commemorate his his strong struggle for men's rights so uh what a bathrobe that's you know mike lindelli gets on there and like if you use the code <laughs> crack cocaine you get 50 percent off so we're very excited for that and uh I think he's going to have different clothing items for each member. You know, we have minority rights, the great Jeff Epstein. Um, so he's thinking about doing like a line of toys, like my pillow toys with Jeff, the great Jeff Epstein on them. Um, John Lewis, civil rights. Um, I think he's going to make a grape, a my pillow grape soda <laughs> to honor the great John Lewis and civil rights. And who is the yeah. other one? Who is the who is the other? I'm all, I, you know I have a great memory, but we're forgetting the, the, rights, the, the civil rights, minority rights. I have to talk to Lindell and find out which which one what he told me before. So hope, uh, they can tell us on Patreon the other one. But obviously the big item. I was sort of distracted by the Roy Den Hollander, uh, my pillow bathrobe. Imagine waking up in the morning and you you just had like a one night stand and then the woman's lying you throw there that on and you throw that on and go, you want to get some breakfast? She's <laughs> not going to say no. That I can tell you. Definitely not. Uh, this comes from at Heritage 30 year on Twitter. Sir, Mr. President, Dr. Trump, almighty sir, sir. I saw a picture of Dan Jr. recently. Why does he appear to have shaggy hair like some kind of radical left wing hippie? I know it's not it's not that he has uh he, I was I looked through his medical records. He got AIDS from Kim Gargoyle. So he's not getting to the to the barber the way he should. He's he's on treatments. Um I don't know what you got it from the he either got it from the needles or from or a very well-worn uh, nether region, speaking of the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's working through, I believe, AIDS. And so it's not the right time for him right now to get uh, a haircut. But no, not radical left. Not radical left. Well, that's good. That's the most important thing. He's oh, dying of AIDS, yes. but 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 he's not radical left. I'll give him that. Here is um, the last question comes from at Stewart MCN. Mr. President, sir, December 25th is a very special day. It's Ghislaine Maxwell's birthday. What gift will you be sending your friend Ghislaine? And it's Christmas, too. So, you know, are you oh. a holiday Christmas and holiday birthday gift in one or just birthday gift? I, I'm not familiar with that person. Uh, Sir Jeffrey Epstein, he he hung out with her a lot, I'm sure. I mean, no, I don't think I'd be sending her a gift, but I did hear, you know, I uh, I may be sending her a care package in the form of uh, a prison guard who okay. will go into her room and, um. You know, what better way to celebrate Christmas and a birthday than to meet Jesus on your birthday? <laughs> so there might be, I don't want to spoil it, but there might be a surprise, surprise present, very strong <laughs> Christian present. <laughs> Mr. President, thank you for your time once again, and good luck in, in the tax fraud trial. I'm sure justice will be served. And please, I'm telling you, I use them. The president uses them. Rocket Money. You won't go wrong. Rocketmoney.com slash MPGA. I'm telling you, I saved a ton of money when I saw subscriptions that I had. I didn't even know I was I, I wasn't even using them and I was just paying for them. And I saved a bunch of money. So I'm sure you can too. 
go to rocketmoney.com slash mpga and save yourself some money too and cancel those subscriptions you are not using mr president um i think that's all we got over here uh the floor is you oh yeah also just a reminder uh patreon.com slash mpga the epis are on december 29th 8 30 p.m eastern time and like i said before only patreon patriots can vote and the perfect tens can only be in attendance mr president the floor is yours thank you very much uh we're looking into hunter biden's dick pics as well i wanted to let people know that mike pence He's a trader, but boy, oh boy, is that guy looking hard for Hunter Biden dick pics. Hey, guys, it's JL. Thanks for listening. Get on that Patreon. Uh, go to my website, jlcomedy.com, for all my shows and all my stuff. Um, Mamaroneck, if we got any people north of the city, I'm at the Emelin, if that's how it's pronounced, theater on December 17th with comedian Al Bell. It'll be a very fun show. Um so if you're any uh, fans or friends who are north of the city, a uh, great time for you to see me without having to hang out in the city all night or come into the city. Uh, hoping to sell a lot of tickets to that. Um, after that, brokerage in Long Island, January 6th and 7th, uh, featuring Tech Stuff Guy. Yes, sir. And January 19th, Pittsburgh uh, Improv. And then I'm looking to get some more gigs in a lot of places. So I should have an update later this month, but confirmed for Boston. I'll be back in Boston, March 3rd at city winery. So pencil that in if you're a Boston person who actually listens till the end of the show. So that's it guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for being a fan. God help us all.